Greetings everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. Recently, Alcat has roped me back into doing content for Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. I've decided I am going to do two last runs in the game, one as a demon and one as an Azada. I know that completing the Lord of Nothing DLC adds some additional content in the main game, so it makes sense to go ahead and do that first. We review the archetypes that the DLC provides, but not the story content itself. I actually enjoyed the experience, and I am curious how the rest of the community feels about the content, so I thought it was worth making a video. Here at Slandered Gaming, we focus on CRPGs, so if that kind of content interests you, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos. Let's start this review with what I liked regarding the DLC. On several levels, I enjoyed Lord of Nothing significantly more than its prequel Through the Ashes. In Through the Ashes, you play as a group of Kenebra citizens who are fighting to reach a safe point within a city that has been overrun by demons. These are all regular people who do not have access to mythic abilities and they have virtually no money. Consequently, Through the Ashes always feels like more of a survival game than an RPG. While I know that appeals to many people, it doesn't appeal to me, and I didn't enjoy the experience very much. Through the Ashes still places you in the role of regular people who have very limited resources, but it leans much more heavily into the RPG aspects of Pathfinder. Consequently, on core difficulty, it's a significantly less painful experience, and most of it didn't feel like a slog to get through. Part of the reason for that is that progression feels fantastic. I started at level 6 and ended at level 11. Through the Ashes also only let you gain 5 levels, but getting levels 5 through 10 in a class is very different from getting levels 1 through 5. It consistently felt like I was getting more powerful and figuring out how to combine my team's mechanics was a real treat. Progression also feels better because in the place of mythic abilities, you can choose from a list of shard powers. The story of Lord of Nothing has your group of adventurers fighting to slow the wrath of Sith Hud, a fallen demon lord who is trying to rise back to his former ranks. To do this, you must find shards that contain a portion of his soul. These shards corrupt their holder but also imbue you with special abilities. Some of them are very powerful, such as removing resistance to cold damage or automatically dealing additional cold damage with each arrow. Many of these abilities scale with the amount of shards you have. It's made readily apparent that the more shards a person takes, the more corrupted they will become. This is a really cool system because your party members will have reactivity to taking on the corruption and it forces you to make what could be difficult decisions. There are five shards in the game and each character can only hold a maximum of three, so you will be forced to spread around the love. Speaking of your party members, Sindri and Rakarth are back from Through the Ashes. The three of you are the only ones who are able to take on shards. You also get a new party member named Penta who was previously enslaved by the Technic League. This group won't make you stop missing Ember and Windowog, but they are still a pretty cool bunch and they do have a smattering of voice acting. You also get three mercenaries and you can purchase a new mercenary at Defender's Heart. For most of this DLC, Alcat does a great job of pacing to keep the player engaged in what's happening. Each shard has its own level with a completely different environment and types of enemies you have to deal with. Whether you are in a jungle infested with giants or fighting through a wizard tower overrun by goblins, the content keeps you on your toes and just when you're about to get tired of an area, it's over and it's time to move on to the next one. It works very well, outside of one caveat we'll talk about in the dislike section. Some of the bosses you have to defeat in order to gain shards are flat out brutal. These encounters are made even more interesting because for most of the levels you repeatedly hear about this villain long before you actually face them. So even though you only briefly speak, it feels like you know quite a bit about them and it gives the encounters more punch. Lord of Nothing also does a great job with scale, making it clear that your party is significantly weaker than the main party of the game. You do not face mythic monsters or frankly any creatures that the commander would have trouble with. Your entire goal is to weaken Sith Hud, but it's understood you are not nearly powerful enough to stop him and there's no intention of facing him directly. As you progress in missions, you can periodically return to Defender's Heart and you'll hear progress reports about how the war against demons is faring. 
All of this helps to make the DLC feel like part of the Pathfinder world and reinforces that your group is assisting with the war in their own small way. There are some aspects of the game that I am neutral on. Lord of Nothing has multiple endings based on how you handle the shards and other decisions you make throughout your playthrough. Usually I am a big fan of this, but in this case it doesn't work because all of them pretty much suck. You just get a slide with a few very small words and that's it. Take this with a grain of salt because obviously the story doesn't truly end until you defeat Sith Hud in the main game and these characters might potentially show back up. I have started a new demon playthrough and want to experience that content in the natural flow of the run so I haven't faced Sith Hud yet although I've heard that the fight is spectacular. Despite this, I feel comfortable saying that the DLC should have an ending that feels appropriate considering the journey you just went through. Many players who experience this might not even have a playthrough that's far enough into the game for them to face Sith Hug. I also think there should be more opportunities for you to interact directly with companions. When you come back to Defender's Heart, each of them has a list of questions you can ask and then that's the only direct conversation you can have with them the entire game. I put this in the neutral section because Lord of Nothing does have a healthy amount of party banter while you are out on missions, but still, it would have been nice to ask more personal questions, especially of the new party member, Penta. Before we get into what I dislike regarding the game, if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate you hitting the like button. I am also now streaming on Twitch, so if you prefer to watch content there, be sure to follow my channel and please subscribe if you'd like to support. There are three areas that I dislike regarding this DLC. First, I don't think it does a good job of building up Sith Hud. You receive a ton of lore and information about all of the other demon lords you can face in the main game, but this DLC spends most of the time exploring the villains you are going to face on each level. I still maintain that was a good strategy, but it does make Sith Hud feel a little undercooked, and I am curious if it will feel that way when I finally face him. Another issue is it feels like this DLC has even less voice acting than Wrath of the Righteous does. There are very long stretches and pivotal moments where there's no choice but to read through text. This is especially disconcerting because again, the game introduces you to some fascinating characters and it'd be nice to hear what the voices sound like. Finally, and most importantly, the final shard level is an absolute slog. The entire environment is cloaked in shadow, making everything look the same and visually it's the most boring of the areas you'll visit. Unfortunately, it also has by far the most combat, with nearly every corner seeming to reveal a new threat and again, some of these monsters are absolutely brutal. It's also the only area that introduces puzzles. These puzzles are very small and significantly simpler to solve than what inevitable excess contain, but it's still annoying when all you really want to do is just get the level over with. The final confrontation is pretty awesome though. That wraps up my thoughts on the Lord of Nothing DLC. To recap, I think it's significantly better than Through the Ashes and provides an entertaining side story to your journey as the commander. There's a variety of environments and enemies that help to keep things moving along at a brisk pace outside of a final level that outstays its welcome. Progression is handled well and there are some enemies that will challenge you to use all available mechanics. I definitely enjoyed the 14 hour experience. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Did you enjoy this DLC? If you haven't played it yet, then this review convinced you to give it a try. Looking forward to hearing your feedback and as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care.